What is up everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. We're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what I did today in the markets as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And yes guys, we have some things to talk about regarding you guys as you read in the title because it's seeing an insane rally right right now heading into the close of the market here in eight minutes that I want to talk about because the report is tomorrow. I want to share with you all what are my thoughts in terms of this massive spike heading into the report. So stay tuned for that here in a couple of minutes as well as Disney guys. Disney is another stock that is killing it right now. It's up multiple percentage points on some very good news that we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. But before we do get into the video, all I ask from you is if you enjoy the content find value in the content just go down below and hit that like button guys very simple turn that like button blue turn it blue consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and feel free to join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart facebook group 100 free of charge linked down below so let's get into the s p very quickly without wasting any time it's up well, now it's down nine cents, guys. It was up three cents. Now it's down 19 cents. It's really not doing much in terms of the overall price. So let's dig in a little bit more here into the hourly chart to see what um, I'm kind of seeing here. So we hit an all time high yesterday, 3102. We already uh, talked about that in yesterday's video. And now it seems like the fact that, you know, we did not hit another all time high and we're kind of struggling under this level of uh, 3100 it seems like we could further pull down here um, in the S&P. This is not looking very good in my personal opinion, but the fact that it seems like we're going to hold the 50 SMA um, heading into the close here in five minutes, that's actually a pretty good sign. So, you know, we're kind of in a spot here where um, we just honestly need to let it wiggle out. So tomorrow's action is going to tell us a lot whether or not, you know, we're going to see higher, higher levels or we might you know, potentially see lower levels. And you guys can probably guess, you know, if we break this resistance tomorrow, which at this point um, is around 3096, which was that all time high from the 7th of November, you know, if we break that level and ultimately break 3102, obviously the uptrend will be continuing. We're hitting higher highs. You know, we're going to be at all time highs at that point. But let's say on the flip side, you know, we, we break this 50 SMA, where are we going to go next? You know, maybe down to about 3082 which was an old resistance back from the 4th of November that's where I'd see um, uh, the next support being and I'd watch the S&P to hold that level let's say we break that level we may be going down to 3068 which would put us right on top of that 180 SMA here on the 10 day 30 minute chart so I think that's a level definitely worth watching if we see more downside now going out a bit to the 4 hour chart let's zoom in a bit you know, that would put us right here. So that kind of makes sense. So if we were to break that level, guys, now we're getting into a, a bigger correction here of about, um, you know, 2%, probably up around 2%. I'd definitely look for a hold on top of 3045, putting us on top of that 50 SMA on this four hour chart. So as of now, guys, not much movement. Just wait and see what it does tomorrow in terms of picking that direction, whether it's up or down. And the NASDAQ and the Dow, they're probably going to be very similar, right? So let's just take a look at this and dig in. Actually, not too similar because the Dow's actually up 100 points right now, up 0.36% while the S&P was flat. So let's actually see what the Dow is doing. And honestly, it's looking a lot more bullish than the S&P for this main reason that, uh, you know, we broke above 27,750, which was that resistance from yesterday and a couple of days ago. And quite frankly, we hit that all time high today guys 27,806 bucks before diving aggressively and now rebounding into the close um, here in about two three minutes which is a very bullish sign the fact that we are closing um, like this right because on a daily you know daily basis here in terms of the one day one minute you know this level we bottomed out at is actually a higher low so technically we actually closed very strong in terms of the Dow so the bulls are definitely Definitely in control here um, on the Dow Jones, at least, right? And on the hourly chart, the pull down.
down we saw this morning um, actually held a higher low on that 50 SMA and again we broke that um, all time high so this is looking very bullish for a multiple different time frames that I'm seeing here um, you know on the Dow Jones so that's pretty much it right you know if we pull down I don't know if we'll get a pull down uh, uh, tomorrow maybe the next day either way at this point I would look to see if it holds um, 27 750 as the support you know if we do pull down because that's that's an old resistance um, you know if we break that level um, on, on a closer basis here we may be going down to let's say um, 27 500 you know 27 350 27 400 those are some levels that I could see the Dow pulling down to if we see a larger correction of more than one two percent um, here in the Dow Jones so the Nasdaq right now guys down about nine points um, down about 0.11 percent on the hourly chart here it seems like we did pull down at a higher low and we tested the 180 SMA at a higher low and uh, now we're starting to confirm the continuation of the uptrend which is good we haven't really uh, fully hit that higher high quite yet because quite frankly we are struggling a bit here on the five day five minute you'll be able to see it um, ever since we hit the all-time high yesterday we pulled down we are, we're holding that higher low like we saw but we haven't fully you know extended to an all-time high again so it's still in that phase where we need to give it some wiggle room so tomorrow just keep an eye for that um, if these markets push green tech stocks do well maybe watch for a move like this as indicated by the arrow you know if we do end up pulling down on the Nasdaq watch for a potential retest on that 180 SMA and maybe we hold that and pop again or we break below it which would uh, trigger a lot more selling in my opinion you know these are some things to watch out for as the market um, kind of plays out so that's the market update portion of today's video guys now drop a comment let me know what are your thoughts on the market are we going higher from here um, are you buying stocks selling options let me know what you're doing what your strategy are if you want to share down below in the comment section so what did I end up doing today guys in terms of trading and this is actually going to segue quickly um, into the you guys and uh, Disney portion of this video I traded Disney today guys believe it or not right and Disney has seen a performance today that we haven't seen since the news came out a couple months ago um, about Disney plus and that's actually the last time that we've seen Disney fly this much in a day right now it's up ten dollars guys market literally just closed it's up ten dollars and nine cents here up seven percent this is absolutely insane guys so what i ended up doing um and you guys know if you've been watching my videos uh that i've been actually following disney very closely these past couple of days so what i ended up doing is I actually set uh, um, a limit order at about 140 bucks on Disney stock. I set a limit order at about 140 bucks, and I actually was out for the day, right? I didn't even know that this catalyst that we ended up getting was going to happen, but I kind of had an idea that Disney, like I've mentioned in actually previous videos weeks ago, I kind of had an idea that they were, they were going to give out um, an initial number when their Disney Plus service was going to launch, right? I had a thought that, yeah, they're probably going to be like, you know, this many people signed up or whatever, right? Some type of metric that is going to potentially push hype into, um, you know, investors, traders, and just the community in general, right? And that's exactly what ended up happening, right? And th that's not the reason why I entered the stock. Um, quite frankly, you know, I saw a lot of potential in the stock, you know, even after their earnings here, uh, because they, they beat on, I believe, EPS. They didn't really do well in terms of revenue, but EPS they beat, right? So I kind of wanted to build a position regardless because of the massive uh, push here. And of course, course at this point you know I knew Disney Plus was coming that's like that's probably the secondary reason um, that I wanted to get in but you know a lot of good stuff was happening here so I set that limit order at 140 because we dropped from 142 after earnings you know down to about 136 yesterday's action um, and honestly the day before that we we were looking bullish because the 50 SMA was being held on this hourly chart today we pulled down a bit and at this point again I was like 
Why not? I'll set a limit order 140, target sell at 142. That would give me a nice little, um, you know, probably around 1-2% profit, whatever it may be, right? And you guys can see that luckily I actually didn't even set a, a limit sell there. This stock ended up flying on the catalyst that we got today. And let me pull up my phone very quickly and let's talk about this. So Disney Plus launch, um, the launch was yesterday, right? Tuesday. I'm recording this video on Wednesday, which is one day after the launch. So they got 10 million signups since launching yesterday. But the thing is, we don't know how many of these signups were from the free trials. So it seems like the market doesn't really care about about the free trials portion right now they're just running on the initial hype of that 10 million number being pretty impressive right in my personal opinion so one thing that we also got from disney is now that they kind of gave that initial number they're not going to give any more insight in terms of metrics regarding disney plus until their next earnings report which at this point it's probably going to be around two uh, obviously about two two and a half months from now so Disney executives, another interesting stat that I read online, guys, they expect Disney Plus to reach 60 to about 90 million global subscribers by 2024. So these are some interesting metrics and uh, kind of why, well, really the reason why Disney flew up today was because of that 10 million number that we got. And honestly, guys, this trade was insane for me. So I got in at 140. Again, I did not set a limit sell there, but once once I saw it flying like this, you know, I ended up just locking in the profits, to be honest, right at about, I think it was like 143.70 or something like that. If I let it go, um, honestly, I should have let it go on this news, but being myself, um, the conservative guy that I am, and a lot of people know you uh, know me as that, I ended up taking the profits, um, again, at about 143, uh, like 70 or something like that. So from 140, um, and, and mind you guys, this position wasn't that big because I I didn't expect it to go this quick, so I was looking to scale in, then all of a sudden, again, it took off, so I took the profits, um, again, on a smaller position uh, of about 2.5%, so still on the day, that's very good for me, and uh, I'm happy with it. You all know that other trades that I'm involved with right now are McDonald's, you know, Facebook, and these are all stocks I'm holding as a swing. Uh, Chipotle is another one that I'm involved with, and uh, I know there's another one that I'm, I'm missing, uh, PayPal. PayPal. So there's a couple that I'm in right now, quite honestly, a lot uh, in terms of swings, but day trades, that's all I ended up doing today. So let's just get into now a couple of other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching including the number one one that you guys probably want me to talk about being you guys guys ticker symbol U G A Z and you guys D guys these are the talk of the town especially around the Wednesday Thursday Friday time period in the week because that is when they're typically the most volatile because that is when the natural gas report comes out right Thursday 10 30 a.m. Eastern Standard like I mentioned in the beginning of this video video. So today we saw this insane rally in natural gas and, and you guys, right? You can see it on the daily chart where you guys went from 1450 up to about 1605 at the close of the market, which was a move of around 10 to 11 percent in the matter of an hour, uh, two hours rather, two hours and 15 minutes, guys. Two hours, 15 minutes. This thing moved nearly 11 percent. And what's that telling me? Let's, I'll be honest, that's kind of telling me that a lot of buyers are coming in, volumes coming in here um, before the report. So one thing that could be honestly telling us is that people think this report could potentially favor you guys, right? That's one thing that I'm that, that I'm thinking from this um, this massive surge here. And if we go to natural gas, you know, we can see the the ridiculous breakout that we got on the uh, on the one day one minute, right? From 257 up to about 
about 267 in the matter of that same 2 hour and 15 minute time period. And this just goes to show guys how volatile and how quickly these can move and really how quickly the swings are in UGAS and the DGAS, right? And if we pull up DGAS, I'm sure you can imagine, you know, this thing dumped from 119 down to about 107 and it's, and it's still in a downtrend um, based on this one day, one minute chart. So kind of what am I looking at right now, right? We got this bullish move. Natural gas is flying. You guys is flying. Again, my opinion is kind of like people might be pu pu uh, putting in their money here. You know, volumes kicking up before this report, hinting that this report may favor you guys, right? This may favor, um, you know, the natural gas bulls. At this point, what do I want to see to kind of confirm that further? I need to see an additional, believe it or not, an additional gap up in you guys tomorrow morning heading into the report. I kind of think that's important. Um, you know, we're getting the breakout on pretty much every time frame, right? Five day, five minute. One that we're actually not getting the breakout on is uh, this hourly chart. But if we get that gap up I'm talking about, that's going to be putting us, whether it's in the mid 16s, whatever it may be, right? 1630, 40, 50, 60, whatever it may be, that's going to be putting us above that 50 SMA, which is giving us a, a pretty nice breakout potential, um, especially heading into that report. And if that report is in favor of natural gas, going up and you guys at the end of the day, right? So, you know, I think a gap up here would be very, very positive heading into the report. And what do we want to see out of the report, guys? You know, we want to see a withdrawal of natural gas at the end of the day. You know, it's getting cold in the Midwest, the Northeast here, where I am in New Jersey, it's been snowing, um, which is insane, right? It snowed a little bit yesterday. It's freezing today. I know a bunch of people, Chicago, Midwest area, it's crazy right now and it's going to get worse over the next couple of weeks we all know that at this point right so we want to see that demand tick up we want to see withdrawals and we want to see that price of you gas end up or uh, natural gas rather end up pushing up right so this the way it closed today guys it, it was a really good move for the bulls, in my opinion. Really, really good move heading into the report. And, uh, you know, if we get that gap up tomorrow, guys, I think that's going to be extremely positive as well. And ultimately, if the report is in you guys' favor, don't be surprised if you guys is back up to 18 bucks, you know, 1750, maybe even 19 bucks by the end of the week. That's how crazy this thing moves. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that ended up happening. But again, on the flip side, you have to look at both sides of the coin. You know, if the report is in favor of DGAS, UGAS can easily be dumping right back down. DGAS would be going back up and we'll obviously be playing the inverse, which would be DGAS at that point in time. So let's get into some other stocks and ETFs. And by the way, let me know your opinions on that down below in the comment section. But let's hop into some other ones here that I do want to talk about Um you know, very, very quickly, Netflix stock. So we saw Netflix stock uh, actually tank today, as, as a lot of you guys probably would expect, right? Because Disney Plus, the 10 million number, despite Netflix having 158 global subscribers, 158 million global subscribers right now, that 10 million number in one day, that's kind of, I'm not saying it's a massive threat, but that's kind of a number where you're like, wow, maybe in a couple years, they're going to be very close to us type of number, right? So, you know, they ended up seeing some pressure to the downside, you know, down about nine bucks, down about 3%. And to be quite honest with you all, um, I got some requests about Netflix. Um, there's no way I would invest in Netflix right now. I think, you know, it's going to be... Um, quite uh, a risky investment now that a lot of players are coming in, you know, Apple, um, obviously Disney Plus, right? A bunch of these players coming in and eating market share, although it's going to take time for them to really catch up to Netflix, it's really still not a place where I find the best use of my money in terms of a long-term investment. But as a trade right now, uh, like a swing trade, I'm seeing this 
uh, as a potential breakout. You know, we saw a massive sell-off in Netflix down from 380 down to about 252. Seems like we bottomed off there. And uh, since that moment in time, we've been really just uptrending and reversing to the upside, right? We found the next bottom higher or low at about 265. You know, we broke above the 180, the 50 SMA. Um, we actually failed to go back up to 317, which isn't that great of a sign. Uh, but still, on a technical basis, we're still right now at a higher low at 283. So me personally, I'd definitely want it to see it hold the 180 SMA on the four hour chart. And ideally, this trend line that I just drew at a higher low, if that does end up happening, guys, this could be a dip buy for Netflix. But again, there's risks right now um, with Disney Plus. You know, who knows? Netflix stock, you know, although it looks decent technically here, you know, that it's breaking up. Netflix stock could still crash maybe another 3% tomorrow just simply on the hype of Disney Plus. And just because Disney Plus, quite honestly, is a very big competitor to Netflix um, right now and over the next couple of years. So that's kind of my thought process right now on, uh, on um, Netflix, right? And quite honestly, Disney too. Chipotle is another one that, I, that I'm watching a lot right now and I'm currently in. Um, we talked about this in yesterday's video. You know, we held 720 old resistance as a new support. That's very attractive, right? 730, we held that point as well. And now it seems like we are reversing um, to the upside, right? And if we go to that three-year chart, I believe, um, you can see it. We're holding the 50 SMA on the three-year chart. Um, on the one-year, one-day chart, we're holding that 180 SMA. So a lot of the chart timeframes are telling me that this is a uh, really, really, uh, uh, it's a high possibility that this is the bottom for Chipotle Mexican Grill, right? At least for the time being. And if we're going back to a smaller chart, we're seeing a full-on breakout of the 50 SMA here on, on the hourly chart, which is a good sign. And now we're looking to test that 180 SMA, which is where I want to build my, my uh, bulk position um, once we break out of that, if we break out of that, right? So right now I'm in, I forget the price, I believe about 750. I'm pretty even on, on my position right now. But uh, again, I look on adding more money at about 780, 790, 800, and uh, heavily at about 8, 805, 810, right? And then probably uh, I'd start trimming profits at 835 and of course 860. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now uh, for um, CMG. Pretty nice dip, but we just need to see further breakouts above those moving above those moving averages um, on a lot of these different time frames, right? So two more before I end off the video today, guys. Rapid fire, BA, Boeing.com, uh, or not Boeing.com. I don't know why it says com. Boeing Cocom. Boeing Cocom, ticker symbol B. A. This is a stock that kind of found a bottom at about 3.30. Um, we held that level back in May. We held that level back um, in the beginning of June. We double bottomed there back in August. And now, right before their earnings, I believe, we held that level as well um, on the 21st of October. And since then, we've been uh, climbing up, right? We've broken above the 50 SMA. Um, we actually are trying to break above that 180 SMA right now. And ultimately, I think... Um, if we break above 370, this could be a potential breakout on, uh, uh, I was about to say PayPal, on Boeing that can get us back up to 390, maybe even back up to 400 bucks. And you guys see here, I have alerts. Um, to be honest, these are probably old alerts. Well, this one at least. Let me uh, lower this one. Uh, down to about 375. I kind of want to uh, get alerted at about 376. If we do get that break of, of the resistance, I might put a limit order um, to buy some Boeing there. As again, I would see potential from there up to about 390. As this stock is trying to turn around um, after all the uh, uh, mayhem that's been going on with the company um, involving its jet, and I'm sure a lot of you guys already know about that, not getting into that in this video. Video, but this company has been through a lot over the past couple of months. And uh, yeah, the last one is going to be Tesla, which, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago in a video with the thumbnail Tesla to 250, Tesla got to th or 350, Tesla. <coughs> excuse me, guys, got to 350 today, guys, which was insane. If we go to the four hour chart, 
you can see, you know, after that earnings report, the profit, we got 250 from 250 up to 320, pulled down a bit. Uh, people here were nervous, including myself, that, you know, this, this thing was going to pull down. But ultimately, we got that pop and that break above 320, which kind of gave me the uh, um, the confirmation and really the, the, the technical break that, hey, we may be going to 340, 350 on this thing. And uh, I think that's when I actually made that video. And from there, you know, we gapped up to 340, broke 340, broke 350. Now, ultimately, guys, we're at 360 um, in terms of the resistance, right? We hit that 356 high today, and uh, we saw a bit of a retracement, which is a good sign. So what I'm looking for in Tesla here is, are we going to hold this 50S? may if we break it we may be going down to 340 to retest that if we hold 340 watch for the break back up to the uh high 340s 350 356 and even higher right so if we're going to that three-year chart we can see now we're getting the levels in tesla stock that we haven't been at over the past couple of years quite honestly so 350 360 is critical if we break 360 guys um you know this thing could be going straight up to 380 maybe even all-time highs um, which would be insane in tesla stock so this one's ridiculously bullish um, probably the hottest stock uh, along with apple because i know i said yesterday apple's the hottest stock in the stock market tesla has some uh um something to say about that apple so apple tesla probably the two hottest in the markets right now and um yeah that's pretty much it for this video uh without dragging it too long if you enjoyed the video video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me and if you want to be a part of the strive smart community that's linked down below the discord the facebook as well as the merch if you do want to rep some sick sweatshirts and t-shirts that is linked down below in the description i'll catch you all in the next video thanks for everybody sticking to the end if you did you are awesome peace out